Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on and clap your hands unto the Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Clap your hands unto the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him glory, give him yes, honor, Lord. give him praise. Come on, give the Lord the fruit of your lips as we welcome the Lord into his house. Yes. Come on, let's welcome the Lord into Thank his you, house. Yes, we want to tell the Lord that, Lord, you are welcome. You are Lord, you are welcome Thank in this you, place. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
let me say glory to the Lamb. I need to say glory to the Lamb. For myself, glory to the Lamb. I want to tell him glory to the Lamb. You help me say glory, glory to the Lamb. Help me sing glory. We give you glory to the land. We give you glory, Lord. Glory to the land. To the land. Yes, Lord, glory. Glory to the land. Glory, glory. Glory to the land. To the land. Glory, glory. Glory. to be in your house, to stand behind this sacred desk, to deal the word that you have given unto us to these, thy people, on this morning. 
Father, I come in the authority of the name of Jesus to bind the enemy. He come to hinder and to destroy. He come to cause your word not to go out. Ah, oh, but God, you said that if your word go out, it would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish that which you have sent it to do. Now, God, anoint these lips of clay that I may speak as the oracle of God and that your word may go forth and that by hearing your word, your people may gain faith and their faith may be tried and that it may stand the test. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Anoint the ears of the listener that they may hear your divine word and give ear unto it and live by it in Jesus' name. We thank you now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank God. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm happy down in my soul. Amen. Amen. I'm happy down in my soul. Hallelujah. Go grab your Bibles, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, your iPhone want to be. Amen. Turn with me again to the book of James. We'll continue our series on today, A Living God's Way. Amen. James, the first chapter. Amen. I'm going to be skipping all over James and amen. Maybe even some in the Peter and maybe some in the Paul. I don't know. Amen. But here it is. Our scripture, our scripture focus text for this morning is James verses one, chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. And here is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord on this morning. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, yes, knowing this, that the testing of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Our series is the Living God's Way. And our subject this morning is living by faith. That's our subject this morning, living by faith or the battle of faith. Seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I just want to try to take my time this morning. Amen. I know that's difficult uh, for me, uh, but I promise you if you pray, amen, if you pray, if you pray, amen, along with me, amen, God will have his way and send his word forth on this morning. Amen. How many, you plan, how many are going to pray with me on this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. If you're out there in, uh, on Zoom, Facebook Live, amen, would you just text the preacher and tell him you're going to pray with him? Amen. Just put it in the chat box. I'm going to pray with you, preacher. Amen. If you pray with me, I promise I'll be out of here by the time your dinner reservation is at 5 o'clock. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you don't pray with me, we might still be here at five. Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy. I know you're going to pray now. Yes, yes, I know you're going to pray now. But this is the second message in the series entitled Living God's Way. On last Sunday, I spoke with you from the subject of let's get religion. Amen. I use that subject specifically because religion is what, it, what the Bible calls it in James 1 verses 26 and 27 and even though calling and even though calling what we have religion is unpopular today and by the world standards I believe the reason why we cannot access the promises of the Bible and the blessings of the Bible is because we are not saying what the Bible says Therefore, our spirit man, I told you on last week, our spirit man is confused uh, when we make our requests known unto God because we are not saying what the Bible says. We're using modern day uh, 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 vernacular, uh, but modern day vernacular don't work with God because words have meanings. 
And just because a society changes the meaning of the word don't mean that the meaning of the word really changed. You can use the word any kind of way you want to, but when you go back to Webster, it still means the same thing. Am I right about it? Okay, I'm right about it. Y'all going to drag with me this morning. But that's all right. I'm going to preach anyway. Amen. When you go back to Webster, it means that. And some, sometimes we need to say what we mean, especially when we're dealing with God and the Word of God and the things of God. We need to learn to say what we mean. Why? Because I told you a few Sundays ago that whether you say it or whether you think it is still the same with God. Am I right about it? And your spirit man is confused because he doesn't know really what you mean when you say what you say. Uh -huh. And if your spirit is confused, what you think about us, baby? Uh huh. If your spirit is confused, what do you think about us? The pastor is confused from the words that are coming out of your mouth. Not about I understand. You know Chris Rock said that, uh, you know. You know, are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? You, what movie was that? Rush Hour. Rush Hour, talking to Jackie Chan. He asked him, are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well, we're understanding the words that are coming out of your mouth. We hear them, but we're not understanding them. And your spirit hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. Oh, God, but your spirit, man is not understanding because we are not saying what the Bible says. Uh-huh. Uh, but when we say what God has said, I told you that it's called confession because confession means to say what God has said. It is when we begin to substitute words for what God has said that we surrender. I want you to understand this. When we substitute what God has said, we surrender the power that is connected to the word. Uh -huh. Now, the Bible declared that there is power in the name of Jesus. So when you then substitute Jesus for a higher power, you have just lost the power that is connected to his name. You can't, get, you can't get salvation calling on a higher power. Can't do it. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Saving. Yeah. Saving the name of Jesus. You can't, you can't give honor to, to everything else. Talking about I just gave honor to God. No, baby, if you're going to give honor to God, you got to say, I'm giving honor to God. If you're going to honor Jesus, you got to say, I honor Jesus. Yeah, you can't substitute his name and expect to get the power. That's why we don't have the power, because we've substituted his name. You see, my brothers and my sisters, I truly believe that there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that all of the Bible is God breathe. That all of it has come directly to us from God the Father through the Holy Spirit. The actual words of the Bible are anointed by the Holy Ghost himself. And they are filled, they, they have full ability to complete, change, and transform you and I if we are willing to work with the divine truth that are contained in the actual word of God. Yeah, yeah. If, if we work with what is contained in God's word, not is what, not is what conceived in your mind, mm -hmm. not is what, what you read on the internet, but if you are, but if you are, if you, are, if you will apply the word of God to your life, it has the ability to transform you. It has the ability to bring about a complete change in you so that you are not who you used to be, but now you are what God, who God says you are. Yeah. 
The Bible is not in vain. And when the Bible says, if any man be Christ, it means that. Yeah, it means that if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Lord, have mercy. I, I ain't got time to talk on that one this morning. Old things are passed away. I ain't got time to really go there. But let me just tell you one more time. Old things are passed away. If you Hold on. Hold on, Jones. Still doing what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Are you really in Christ? That's the question this morning. Here it is. In James 1 and verse 2, we find these words. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Here is the truth of life. The truth of life is that the path of life is filled with all kinds of trials and temptations. Yes, the path of life is filled with all kinds of trials and temptation. Trials such as sickness, disease, accidents, disappointments, sorrows, suffering, and death. Temptations such as all the seductions to sin and evil. The Bible is clear that we are to count it all joy. Am I right about it? It's right, it's right there in your Bible. That's why I asked you to get your own Bible. Hey, uh, the Bible is clear that we are to count it all joy. You see, anyone can count it joy sometimes uh, joyful. Anyone can count something joyful when it's going their way. Am I right about it? When everything is going your way, it's easy to smile. It's easy to kick up your heels and say, glory to God. Oh, God is so good. You know why it's so easy? Because things are going your way. But when things begin to go contrary to the way that you want them to go, sometimes it's a little difficult to express joy. We can't even find it nowhere on your face. Not in your eye, not in your expression, not in your demeanor. We can't find it nowhere. Why? Because life is going contrary to the way you want it to go. But the joy that James is talking about is not based on circumstances. But this is the joy that resides in the reborn, the recreated human spirit when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The force of joy when we receive Christ, the force of joy uh -huh, was placed on the inside of us. Now, now we must, here it is, this is why we don't have it, we must walk in obedience to God. We must walk in obedience to God's word and allow that joy to be our response. Yeah, you got to let it out. Oh, you ain't going to help me. It's in there. Why? Because God, you have become a, a child of God. It's in there. But when trials come, when heartaches come, you've got to allow that joy out. Because what, what, what trials will do will close the door. Uh -huh. Lord, you going to help me. Uh, but you got to be determined to open the door and let joy out, even in the midst of suffering. Yes, Lord. Yeah, it's, it's hard, it's tight, but it's right. Yeah, it's tight, but it's right. You got you to be in your response when you fall into divers' temptation. You see, there is only one way to face trials and temptation. The only way the Bible gives us to face trial and temptation is with the spirit of joy. Oh, yeah, you got to change something, baby. Uh, we have to switch our thinking. We have to turn our attitudes uh, around about our trials and our temptation uh, completely around. We have to quit thinking negatively, and we have to think positively. 
verse 3 here tells us that we must know something. And it tells us that we must do something. Verse 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is paid, knowing that the only response to trials we are to have is that we are to have joy in the midst of our trials. And when we know that, we will understand that the trying of our faith worketh patient. Yeah, we must know that the trials and temptation are not designed to defeat and discourage us. But they are designed to prove us, to make us stronger and more pure and righteous. Look closely at this verse because the Bible said that the trying of your faith, I'm, I'm already happy. Uh, the Bible says that the trying of your faith, would you say that with me? Somebody type it into the comment section. The trying of your faith. Yeah, the trying of your faith. Well, well let me ask you this. How does faith come? Uh-huh. Well, yeah, thank you, Sadal. Romans 10 and 17 tells us, you know the scripture, faith comes by hearing. Uh -huh. and, and hearing by the word. The, the, yeah, yeah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 and 17. That passage of the scripture gives us knowledge on how faith comes. By taking in the word of God. Yeah, when we hear the word of God and believe the word of God, that word produces faith, you got to get this, in our life. That, that word produces, that, that is not only saving faith, but that's also faith to live by. Yeah, yeah, that's living faith, a faith to live by. But here it is, the faith that is produced in our lives is still untested faith. You ain't going to help me this morning. Y'all just stay with me. I'm going to try to calm down. Uh-huh. When we hear the word, uh-huh, and when, we, when, when faith is produced in our lives, it's faith. Why? Because the Bible says that faith cometh by I've got to hear the word in order for faith to come into my life. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's untested faith. And James tells that our faith will be tested. I wish you read your Bible. That's what James said. He says your faith will be tested. You've got the word on the inside of you. But it's untested. So now, in order for it to really produce life in you, that faith has to be tested. God, help me this morning. Your faith, my faith will surely be tried. You and I may have faith, and for the moment, we may be without a trial. But nobody, ask Abraham, ask, ask it, Isaac, ask Jacob. As, 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 as that boy who was put in prison and went down to Potiphar house. If you got faith, it's going to be tested. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, no one has ever had faith and was all their life without trials. No, for faith in the very nature implies a degree of trial. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. Let me show you how it works, my brother and my sister. When most folks hear something, what do they do normally? What do they normally, when they hear something, they normally, what they do? They normally repeat it. Oh, yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they normally do. Let, 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 me, see if I can, let me see if I can work this real quick. Uh, most people repeat it. So it is with us as Christians. When we hear the word, we repeat it. And upon hearing and repeating the word, it is released in our life. Yeah, yeah, it produces faith. Yeah, 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 because we heard the word, we repeated the word, we learned the word. You know they taught us to memorize the scripture, right? Why? Because in memorizing the scripture, it produced faith in our life. 
Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that, that's how it is. It repeated and we heard it. We repeated it. It released in our life. It is faith, but it's untested faith. And so when we get excited and we feel good, right, and we are on the top of the mountain, and we are repeating Psalm 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That's faith, baby, but that's untested faith. Amen. You ain't going to help me this morning. That's faith, but that's untested. All you got is faith saying it. You haven't sat down in the chair yet. You ain't going to help me this morning. I'm, uh, you know, you know my favorite, my favorite uh, uh, illustration is you got faith. You say you got faith in the chair, but you ain't sat in the chair. So that's untested faith. Your faith is tested when you sit. You ain't gonna help me. Uh, that's untested faith. We run around hollering, I bless him at all times. That's faith. That's, that, that's faith heard. That's faith spoke, spoken because it is the word of God. What, what faith, uh, we, that was faith repeated? Is faith quoted? Is faith decreed? Is faith commanded? But it's all untested faith. But that's untested faith. So this is what has to happen. Because you said those words. Because in your moment of joy, you ran around the church. Because you stood up and declared, I'm going to bless him at all times. God has to allow. You ain't going to help me this morning. He has to allow the enemy to test that faith. You crying over a trial that you brought on yourself when you was happy. When you was up jumping and shouting, oh, the wealth of the rich, of the wicked and laid up for the righteous. God got to allow the devil to take you into poverty. He got to allow your ends not to meet. Because you don't, you don't declare all this faith. I command faith. I command the word of God to work for me. You don't commanded it, but it's untested. Now can you stand? God, help me this morning. Can you stand the test of faith? Can your faith stand to be tested? You crying? You falling out? Hiding? Closing those sh the shadows? Locking yourself in the room? All because last week, two years ago, you were running around the church, hollering and screaming, talking about how good God is and how much you will trust. <sighs> let, me see. let me see how much you, let me see. I'm, I, my voice won't let me go all that. Talk about how much you will trust him and. I just, you know, you, you're supposed to be how much you'll trust him and how much you love him and how much you'll give him and you'll give your all and, and you'll give your body to be burned. Now you got a trial, baby. Because you done spoke that faith. You done let it come alive in you. Now that trial, now that faith got to be tested. Yes. Can I tell you something? Faith has to be proven. Untested faith is unreliable faith. I'm going to learn how to be a teacher in a minute. Unreliable faith is dead faith. Dead faith is no faith. One more time. I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me. One more time, one more time, one more time. Untested faith is unreliable faith. Yeah, uh -huh. Unreliable faith is dead faith. Dead faith is no faith. In order for faith to be alive, it must be proven. It is then and only then after our faith is tested that it becomes alive to us as something we can rely on and grow as the Lord brings even more circumstances into our life in order to test our faith. It's only then. Because you see, we think, we think that faith is built in leaps and bounds. Faith is never built in leaps and bounds. Told you this before. Faith is built one step at a time. I got to trust God today for what I need today. 
And when I trust him today for what I need today, he will supply my need on tomorrow. Let me diverse a little bit. Still talking about faith. You remember the story. Oh, God, I, you, I, I'm just so full. You remember the story of, of the widow woman who had a little meal. She was gathering the sticks, and, she, and the prophet told her to bake me a piece of bread. You remember that story? Anybody, anybody remember that story? Uh, the Bible says that, 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 that when, when, she, when she obeyed the prophet, her faith was tested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her faith was tested. He said, make me a cake first. He, he says, he says to her, make me a cake first, and, and then your meal barrel will never, uh-huh, uh, it'll never run dry. You, 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 you missed that part. I, I know you missed that part. But here it is, here it is, here is her walking in faith, right? Because she makes him a cake, and, and, and she knows that that's all the meal that she had. Yeah. You ain't going to help me this morning. Ah, but when she gets back, after she brings him the cake and she serves him, the cake, when she gets back to the meal barrel, uh, the meal barrel is not full. But now there is enough meal in this barrel to make her cake and her boy a cake. And now they are full. And so the meal barrel is put back on the shelf. You ain't going to help me. Uh, and, 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 and when the meal barrel is put back on the shelf, it's empty. You ain't going to help me. Uh, but in the morning, when she get up to make the man of God a cake and to make her a cake and to make her son a cake, she goes back to the meal barrel that she know was empty on yesterday. God, help me. Now, here it is. It got enough meal. To, you ain't going to help me. Jesus. Father, to make another cake. Your, te your faith has, has to, be to be tested. Untested faith is unreliable faith. I'm, I'm, I'm going to slow down. Unreliable, unreliable faith is dead faith. And dead faith is no faith. Turn your Bibles real quickly to 1 Peter. The third chapter, the 1 Peter, 1 Peter, the first chapter, I believe it is. Uh, I just want to just, I, I got, I'm so full, I just can't get it all. First Peter, the, the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Let me, let me read them to you. Let me, let me read them to you. First Peter, you, 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 we want to live, we want to live, we want to live God's way. Yeah, yeah you, you know how important this is to live God's way, to live by faith. You know how important it is? Because the Bible declared that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So here it is, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. 3 through, 3 through 9. Uh, the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 3 simply is the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the whole gospel right there. That God has begotten us unto Jesus Christ according to his bond of mercy. If it had not been for the love and mercy of God, you wouldn't have not been here. Am I right about it? That's the gospel. He begotten us unto a live hope. We've been made alive, right, uh, because Jesus rose from the dead. And then he said, we be given an, an inheritance. Our inheritance is incorruptible. Our inheritance is undefiled. And our inheritance fadeth not away. And it is reserved for us in heaven. You can't take it. You can't steal it down here. Why? Because God got it locked up for me in heaven. Uh -huh. And then he said that we are kept by the power of God. Here it is through what? Uh -huh. That's how we kept. We kept by power of God, faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Then he says, wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, uh-oh, he, he talked about faith, now he finna tell you something. Though now we greatly rejoice, how do we, how do we handle this? We greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are heaviness through manifold temptation. You... We rejoice. Why? Because now, for only a season, we are we are have we have heaviness through man. We, in other words, we're going. We're going. You gotta go through many temptations. Why? 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 Because you got faith. Lord Jesus. Uh huh. And 
27 said, here it is. He said that the trial of your faith, that faith that you got is going to be tried. He said, but listen, when it's tried, the trial of your faith is being much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it be tried, uh-huh, it's going to be tried with lemon water. No, that ain't what the Bible said. Your trial, your faith is going to be tried with only good times. That ain't what it said. Your faith is going to be tried only when you, only with a whole bunch of goodness. The Bible said that it is tried by fire. You know what fire do. Fire consumes, it not only burns, it consumes everything that it come in contact with. That's why Moses was so astonished. Huh. That's why Moses is so astonished because he said, let me turn aside and see this great sight. This bush is on fire, but hear what the Bible says, but it is not being consumed. Fire eats up. When after fire touches, it's never the same no more. What you got? It ain't never the same no more. But so it is. So, but your trial, your, your faith, you hear it is, your faith has to be tried by Fire. What make you think you're going to get by on a, on, a, on a bed of ease? Your faith got to be tried by fire. But then he says, once it's tried by fire, it's being more precious than that perishes. Though it's tried by fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Flip over to first four, chapter 4 of 1 Peter. Whew, I'm almost through. I'm going to finish in about 10 minutes. Flip over to 1 first, first Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Uh -huh. Peter, uh, Peter chapter 4 starts off by telling us that Christ has suffered in the flesh. And then he says to arm yourself likewise. In other words, since Christ suffered, since Christ suffered, you ought to arm yourself Likewise, you ought to have the same mind. What should that mind tell you that your good mind that you got? Your good mind should tell you that you got to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know I might not be popular, <laughs> but I got to tell somebody, you're going to suffer, baby. You're going to go through because you were just jumping and shouting, hollering how good God is. You done read the word. Now you think you ain't going to go through? You're going to go through. He said, you, he said he has suffered for us. Let us alarm ourselves likewise. Peter goes on to talk about how Christ suffered for us. And then he tells us here in chapter 4, beginning at verse 11, he tells us something remarkable. He says, if any man speak, all them words coming out your mouth, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. Yeah, if any man minister, let him do so as the ability that God has given him, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus. Here is the new international version of that uh, uh, new international version of that scripture. If any man speak, he should do so as one speaking the very word of God. How does faith come? How does it come? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God when we speak we should do it as one speaking the very words of God so that faith can be birthed in our hearts so then Peter goes on as if to say because you have faith because you are armed with the mind of Christ but your faith is unproven your faith is untested your faith is untried. He goes on in verse number 12, and he tells the beloved, think it not strange. Thank you, not strange. I'm, I'm preaching. I'm done. I'm almost done. He says, thank you, not strange. You see, we have, we have the wrong perspective 
of the trials and the thing that come in our lives to try us so that our faith can be proven and be, be more valuable than silver and gold. Yes. He said, don't think it's strange. Concerning the fiery trial, I don't know how I got in this. Last week you was running around the church. You know, I'm, I'm just, I just got to keep it real. In night 28, 2018, we couldn't sit you down. How good God is. The blessings of God make it rich and add no sorrow. Oh, I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. All oh, we were saying everything. Then 2020 came. 2019 came. Can I tell you something? 2019 was a challenging year. The latter part of 2019, really all of 20, was a challenging year for many of us in this church. Even before the pandemic hit, we was already going through. Let me just tell you about me. Can I just, can I tell you about me? Before the pandemic hit, I was already going through. I wasn't playing. I was going through. I wasn't faking it. I was going through. I was preaching every Sunday and going in 2019. I was going through. I was, I was holding up the bloodstained banner, but I was going through in 2019. I had to prove my faith by continuing to preach what God said he would do. Wasn't easy, but I'm here to tell you I made it. And then just when I thought it was going to be a little less, 2020 hit. The pandemic shut down everything. Got to wear a mask everywhere. Folks dying left and right. Huh? And then that ain't bad enough. Now you can't even hold church the way you used to. And then if your church members get sick, you can't go to the hospital and even visit them. So you have to just pray from afar. Challenging. But, but we said, I love God in spite of. We said, I serve God to the end. Your faith got to be challenged. Okay. Now, here it is, 2021, and now uh, we are expecting better things. But can I tell you, January and the first part of February have been no easier. Amen. Ain't been no easier. But, 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 we got, but I got 20 years behind me jumping and shouting. Jesus. I got 20 years behind me declaring what I would do. I would always serve God. I got 20 years behind me reading the word of God. I got 20 years preaching the word of God. Don't you think that by 19, 20, and 21, my faith ought to stand the test of time after 20 years? Yeah. Okay, why y'all on? Everybody who running, your faith is small. Everybody who can't handle it, you need to get another dip of the Holy Ghost. All y'all want to tell me about how good God is and you can't handle what God allows in your life, there is something Help me, Jesus, wrong the matter somewhere. Why church folks falling out? Why church folks giving up? Why are church folk who've been in church for the last 30 years decide I don't have to take this no more? You got to take that and some more and submit yourself unto the power of God. I want to tell somebody this morning. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? I ain't mad with nobody. I, I just preach it like this because I have it burning in my soul like this. And so if you can't take it like this, please, please let me uh, apologize to you and let me say to you, I don't know why church folk who, uh, 
who've been in church for the last 30 years. I can't, I, I, I don't know, I don't imagine why, I can't imagine why you're giving up now. I, 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 don't, I don't know why you who have been, uh, who have been jumping and shouting along with me right here in this building. I don't know why you're not, you, 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 you feel like you can make it on your own and you don't need God, you don't need to submit to God. I, I, I just can't, I don't understand it. Why? Because if you are rooted and grounded in the word of God, shallow, if you are rooted and grounded in the word of God, you ought to be able to stand when the test come. And if you got to run when the test come, you ain't got nothing. Your faith is dead. So, our faith is tried when we believe the promises of God. I've got to, I'm closing. Y'all can sit down. For those of y'all in the sanctuary, I know y'all happy. I'm happy myself. But I got to close this thing. Our faith is tried when we believe the promises of God. Our faith is tried in the waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. You're going to have to wait. And when you wait, your faith is tried. Why? Because we all want to help God out. Come here, Sarah. That should have been all our name. Sarah wanted to help God out. You ain't going to help me. Am, am I, don't, 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 don't touch that, but no, don't do it. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Sarah wanted to help God out. God told Abraham and Sarah, I'm going to bless you with a child. Sarah got tired of waiting. She said, here, Abraham, take my maid, Hagar, and go in unto her and produce an heir. That wasn't what God said. God said, I'm going to have, you going to have a, Sarah, you going to have a baby. Sarah said, I'm 90-something years old. It looked like me having a baby. But God said, and in, in, in the waiting period, Sarah got discouraged. If you ain't careful in the waiting period, you're going to get discouraged. Your faith is tested during the waiting period. You got to learn to wait on God. He ain't going to move on your turn. He ain't coming when you want to. Song by, song by said it may not come when you want it. He ain't going to never come when you want it. He going to come on his time. Because you want him now. And you ain't, the fire ain't even got to you yet. You see the fire coming. God, come on right now. Come on, Lord, I see the fire coming. Come on right now. Come on, Lord, come on right now. God is saying, no, stand there. Wait till the fire gets you. Hebrew boys. Hebrew boys is our example. I, I know I'm all over, but I'm preaching this morning. I'm a, Hebrew boys is our example. They saw the fire. They heard the king said, heat it seven times harder. They heard him. They could have said, oh, we don't want to go through. No, they said, oh, king, live forever. God shall deliver us. But be it known unto you, oh, king, that if he don't deliver us, he's still able. You got to learn to wait. You gotta, your faith is tried in the waiting time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Faith is tried. And you holding on to the, to the assurance of that promise while that promise is delayed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to hold on to that promise even though it's delayed. Well, I, by now, I should be married. <laughs> by now, I should be a millionaire. By now, I ought to own my own company. By now, the dream that God gave me five years ago ought to come to pass. You got to learn your faith is being tested when you are, when you are waiting on the, for the fulfillment on the promise. Your faith is being tested when you're holding on to the assurance. I know it's going to happen. I'm going to hold on to the assurance of the promise even while my promise is delayed. Your faith is tried in continuing to expect a promise. I don't know when it's coming, but it's going to be here soon. It's coming. I'm going to continue to expect the promise. And I'm going to act upon it until it is, all, it is all points fulfilled to me. I don't see how that can be. But faith is what I got. 
in God. Can I tell you something? Be not mistaken. God never gives us faith to play with. Faith is a sword. It was not made to just stand on your side, to look pretty on certain occasions, exhibit in a parade or when you come to church on Sunday morning. But faith is a sword that is meant to cut and to wound and to slay. Uh-huh. Faith yeah, is, is, what, is, what, is what spans the gap between here and heaven. Lord have mercy. Faith is what gets us, what gets the battle won. Faith is like a sea-going vessel that is not meant to sit in dry, dry in dock in, in the docks, but it's to, to, to go upon the deep high sea. To whom God has given faith, it's like a man that gives his friend a light because he expects it to be dark on his friend's way home. The very gift of faith is a hint to you and I that we will want it. It's a hint to you and I that at certain points and places uh, we will require it and that at all points and in every place we're going to really need it. Yeah, you're going to need faith because faith is what pleases God. As we read throughout the scripture, we, we read that you cannot live without faith. For again and again, we are told that the just shall live by faith. Believing in our living, and we therefore need it, and we need to agree. That without faith, we cannot please God. And if we're going to live God's way, We've got to get a good understanding that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, we've got to get a better understanding that my faith has to be tried and God has to allow the enemy uh -huh, to try my faith. I'm closing with the story of Job. You know Job, don't you? Yeah, on Sunday morning, his name is Job. Monday through Friday, his name is Job. You need both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need both of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but Job, I want, it's Sunday morning, ain't it? Ain't it Sunday morning? Job is I want to talk about. I want to talk about your job. Uh -huh. The Bible said that in the course of time when the sons of God got together, Satan presented himself in the midst. Notice Satan was just on the premises of God when the sons of God got together. He was just there in the midst. He didn't say nothing to God. It was God who said something to Satan. God starts this conversation off, and he starts the conversation. He says, where have you been? Just like us, instead of asking where you've been, he told him where I come from. He said, I've been up and down the earth seeking whom I may devour. My God, I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for somebody to take part. God have mercy. God then said to the devil, you ain't going to help me. You ought to read your Bible. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Sometime I feel like my name uh, must have been in that conversation. Have you considered my servant Jones? I know sometimes you probably felt that way. Yeah, if, if you really love God, uh, God, if you really believe God, if you really want to trust God, if you really want to do for God, I know that there are times when you feel, whew, your name was mentioned in this. Job said to, to, to the Lord, not only paraphrasing this part of the scripture, 
Not only have I considered him, but I've been all around him. I done looked at everything he got. I done seen how he go in and how he come out. I know everything about Job. He said, but what I do know for sure, yeah, is that you got a hedge around Job. Yeah, yeah I, I peeked over the hedge, but I couldn't jump the hedge. Yeah, yeah. In your life, the devil is always peeking over the hedge, but he can't jump the hedge. But here then, the, but then this is the bad part. God then said, let me open. Let me open the hedge. Mm -hmm. That's what God then said. Since Job, see, see, see you, got, you got to read the scripture. You, you, oh, God, help me. You got to read the scripture. See, Job, oh, God. Job, the Bible said that Job was a just and upright man. Job prayed every day. Uh -huh. Job would get up early in the morning. Read your Bible, read your Bible. Job would get up early in the morning and offer sacrifice for his children in perhaps he didn't know but just in case they had committed sin that was faith in God God then had to step back and allow the devil to try Job's faith I'm preaching this morning I know this thing is good to me he got to step back in your life, God got to step back and allow the devil to try all that, all that running, jumping, hollering, and screaming, speaking in tongues you've been doing. You don't remember those days, huh? I'm coming, I'm, I, just, I just need to tell you. You don't, you don't remember the day church was out, we still was. You remember that day, Hunter? Church was out. We, you were going to the, they were taking you to the car. <laughs> you don't remember that, huh? You don't, you don't remember those days. They was taking you to the car, and you still was. Child, how did I get home last night? We had to drag you in the house. You still was out. You don't remember those days. Now that you got all those days behind you, uh, and now trouble is in front of you, you got to go through. You got to go through. I just want to encourage you. Let me finish Joe real quick. Let me finish Joe real quick. I got to go. I haven't preached long enough. The Bible says that God removed the hedge, told the devil he can touch everything, but don't touch his life, right? Job, the Bible said that, that in all that he did, he didn't sin with his mouth, right? But Job did have a problem, and God had to correct him in his problem, amen. And then after God corrected Job in his problem, see, we always want to get to the end. The Lord restored Job twice as much for his trouble. But you, but you forgot the day by day. You, that's what you forgot. You want to skip to the end. Don't skip to the end. Go to day by day. His children died. His horses died. His cattle died. He had lost his family. His wife turned against him. She didn't leave him. But she turned. Where was she going to go anyway? They was already poor. What Tyler Perry say? I could do bad by myself. If she had, if she had a left and she would have done bad all by herself. Then... On top of that, his so-called friends come. You got to get this scripture. You see, see, we want to jump to the end. But you got you to understand the agony that Job went through. And the Bible said that not only did his friend turn against him, his own skin turned on him. Friend, yeah. Thank you, Sister Linda. Is that what the wife told him? Don't you just give up and die? You look bad. You probably stink. You all drivel up. You just need to go on and die. Curse your God and die. Job says, you sound like a foolish woman. He didn't call her a fool. He said, you sound like one. You got to learn how to talk to people, especially when you want to go home. It's Valentine's Day. You got to learn how to talk to folks. 
He didn't call her a fool. He said, you sound like one of those yeah. foolish women. So he said, I receive good at the hand of the Lord and not bad also. Joe said, all my appointed time, I'll wait till my change comes. I want to encourage you this morning to live by faith. Don't give up. Don't let go. Don't turn loose. Hold your head up and count it all joy because your faith is more precious than silver and gold. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Right where you are, just bow your head. Our Father in heaven, we thank you now for this word that you have given unto me. It has burned in my spirit. And I thank you because it has been received with joy. Now, Lord, help us to realize that because we have faith, we have to go through and we have to endure. And that, want, that our, the trying of our faith worketh patient. And you said to let patient have its perfect work in our life. God, help us. Help us to live your way. Help us to do it your way. Help us to live by faith and battle and win the battle of faith that our faith may endure in Jesus' name. If you're there on this morning, amen, and you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, now if you know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, you just stray, I want you to just believe God on this morning. Amen. I don't need you to, you don't need to, to, to you don't need another word, you don't need a shout, you don't need all that. All you need is to repent, amen. Tell God you're sorry, amen. Get on up because if you repent, he is faithful and just to forgive you. And then you get on up and you do what God has called you to do, amen. Amen. Somebody need to, need to get up and to go back to doing what God has called them to. Just because you got some trial, just because you got some problem, don't mean nothing. That means that, mean that you don't, that you don't, have, okay, you don't preach. Okay. Uh-huh. We all have trials. But maybe there's somebody who don't know the Lord and the pardon of their sins. So if you're out there, you are a sinner, you don't know him in the pardon of your sins. Please just say this little prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you in prayer asking you to forgive me of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life. I believe, Father God, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. And I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and I will worship you all the days of my life. Because your word is true, Lord, I confess with my mouth that I am born again, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. If you pray that simple little prayer, we believe that you got born again. Amen. And you are now in the family of God. As you begin to grow in Christ and read his word, know that you have to understand that your faith that you have in God will be tested. Can I tell you, even saving faith is tested because, because the moment you say you're saved, that you receive the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, the devil is going to come. Friends who always been borrowing a, a beer, a cigarette, or, or any kind of else, they've always borrowed. The moment you say you have Jesus, they're going to come, they're going to come to give you. They're going to want to repay you now. You borrowed that five, you've been borrowing every time. Okay, I am preached already. Your faith is going to be tested. You got to stand the test of time. Amen. And you've got to, hallelujah, you got to give your all to God. Amen. 
I just want to I just want to do this little song right quick since since my brother's praying and playing it. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, it does. My hallelujah belongs to you. Even though I'm going through, my hallelujah belongs to you. I put a smile on my face. My hallelujah belongs to you. Here is why God. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. You deserve it. Yes, yes you do. You deserve yes. it. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. I love him. I love him. I love him. My hallelujah belongs to you. My trial great but still my hallelujah belongs to you i've had some bad days but still my hallelujah belongs to you because no matter what i go through lord you deserve it yes you do you deserve it yes you do you deserve it yes you do bless you on this morning it is prayer amen now it's time for us to enter into the into the ministry of giving amen whenever we hear the word of the Lord whenever we come to worship the Lord we always bring the Lord a gift amen first of all let me say thank you to all of the members of Emmanuel for your continual support over these last 11 months during this pandemic your support has been what has, what has kept us on the air and we thank God for it and we bless him and we give him glory and certainly we thank you. Amen. We want to encourage you to continue to give. Amen. That the word of the Lord may go forth and that the people of God may continue to be blessed. For those of you who are watching that belongs to another church, we thank you for watching and we're so glad that you're here. Amen. But I want to encourage you if you belong somewhere, amen, you have a church home to pay your tithes at your church home. Amen. I want to encourage you to pay your tithes at your church home. Amen. Even though God is going to bless us and you're going to but if you pray your tithe, amen, will you get fed? Amen. God will bless you. Amen. But I want to also encourage you to be to, to give freely and liberally, amen, to the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. Amen. If you've enjoyed the message, if you've enjoyed what's going on, please 
be, please uh, uh, sow seed into this ministry for you are sowing into good ground. Amen. You can always go to Giblify, www.giveli.com. Amen. Go to Giblify, download it on your mobile device. Amen. On your, your Apple, your Android device. Amen. Uh, connect it to your accounts. Amen. Put in the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. When you put in the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, you'll see a picture of our church. And then you will see my handsome faith, this man that preached the gospel this morning. Amen. Amen. You will see my face. Amen. You will know that you are in the right place to give. And maybe you are not tech savvy and you just want to give. Amen. Through check or money order or whatever. You want to mail it through the mail. Amen. Mail it to Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. Post Office Box 388, Seaside, California, 93955. Amen. I pray uh, for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, in the seat back pocket in front of you or right there in back of you, should be an envelope. You can take that envelope, fill it out, amen, and deposit it into the box right in the center of the wall on the door as you exit the sanctuary. God bless you. Let me pray a prayer over those who are giving on this morning. Amen. No matter how you're giving, we want the Lord to bless it. Our Father in heaven, we thank you now for all those who are giving, for those who have a desire to give but had not, and for those who have already given. We pray this morning that you would bless it, sanctify it, let it be used for the purpose for which it is raised, and that is to bring glory and honor to your kingdom, to be a help to your people everywhere. And now, God, I pray that you will return it unto the giver 30, 60, even 100 fold. I pray that you will return it unto them health. I pray that you will return unto them wealth. I pray that you will return unto them strength. God, that even as they go through their trials and their faith is being tried, I pray that you would return unto them strength to hold their head up and to go through with joy. In Jesus' name, I pray. And we receive it now and we thank you for it. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks. We love you. Amen. It is my desire to preach the word under conviction and with power. Amen. It is my desire to preach the word of God because the word of God is the only thing that will change our lives. And I don't know about you, but we I do know about you. We all need to be chained. We're living in a day and a time where men are not even concerned about their own word. They will lie and steal and, and kill just to get ahead. But in the, in the house of God, among the saints of God, we are not like that. For we love one another. We pray for one another daily. And we hope to see you soon. God bless you. Join us on Tuesday night. Amen. It's 6.30 for prayer and then 7 p.m. for Bible study as we dive deep into the Word of God as our faith, as we gain more faith, knowing that our faith will be tried. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. We love you. We love you. Let the church say amen. Let the church.
your word on. We thank you for all of your people tuned in, whether they're on Facebook Live, whether they're on Zoom or on our church's website, however they may receive your word, we thank you for them. We pray that the word that we've heard today, we know that it will not go out and return void, but it will accomplish that which you've sent it to do. And I know you sent your word to encourage. I know you've sent your word to build up. I know you've sent your word to produce joy, even in the midst of our trials and our tribulation. For it worketh patience in our lives, and we shall let patience have her perfect work. For it is in the name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Now take us down from this place. Now, divine presence. God, be with us in our separate homes. Let your love fill it. Let your peace and your joy be multiplied in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. God has spoken. Praise the Lord. Powerful. That's... Uh,